In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. Book of Heaven, Volume 10, Part 6 January 20th, 1912 When love does not obtain the intent with good manners, it tries to obtain it with huffs, with fusses, and even with holy naughtiness. As my always lovable Jesus returned, he continued to make himself seen while clasping hearts. And as souls resisted those squeezes, grace would remain inoperative. And Jesus would take this grace in his hand and bring it to those few who were letting themselves be squeezed. He brought a good part of it also to me. On seeing this, I said to him, My sweet life, you have been so good with me in letting me share in the grace that others refuse. Yet I feel no squeezes. On the contrary, I feel so very wide, so much so that I am unable to see either the width or the height or the depth of the boundaries in which I find myself. And Jesus, my beloved daughter, my squeezes are felt by one who, not letting herself be squeezed thoroughly by me, cannot enter to live in me. But the one who lets herself be squeezed by me as I want already passes to living in me. And by living in me, everything is wideness. Constraints no longer exist. All the constraint lasts for as long as the soul has the patience to let herself be squeezed by me, to the point of undoing the human being in order to live in the divine life. But then, as she passes to living in me, I keep her safe. I let her wander through my endless boundaries. I no longer need to use bonds. On the contrary, many times I myself have to force her so as to put her out a little, to let her see the evils of the earth, to make her plead with greater yearning for the salvation of my children and have them spared the deserved chastisements. And she is on tenterhooks and pushes me, for she wants to enter into me, lamenting, saying that the earth is not for her. 
How many times have I not done this with you? I had to show myself huffy and fussy to make you stay a little bit at your place. Otherwise you would not have lasted one minute outside of me. My heart knows what I suffered in seeing you outside of me, wriggling about, struggling, crying. While the others do this, so as not to be squeezed, you did it so as to live in me. And how many times have you yourself not become huffy and fussy because of this way of mine of operating? Don't you remember that we have also been in a fight? And I, ah, yes, I remember. The day before yesterday, precisely, I was about to get upset because you put me outside of yourself. And I saw you crying over the evils of the earth. I cried together with you, and the huffiness went away. You are truly naughty, O oh Jesus. Don't you know that you are naughty, little naughty one? But of love, in order to give love and to receive love, you arrive at naughtiness. Isn't it true, Jesus? After a huff or a fuss that we take with each other, don't we love each other more? And he, certainly, certainly it is necessary to love to be able to comprehend love. And when love does not obtain the intent with good manners, it tries to obtain it with huffs, with fusses, and even with holy naughtiness. January 27th, 1912. The soul wants hiddenness. This morning, Jesus showed me a soul who was crying, but it seemed, rather, to be a crying of love. Jesus clasped her, and it seemed that inside his heart there was a cross that, pressing against her heart, made her feel abandonments, coldness, agonies, distractions oppressions. And the soul wriggled about, and a few times she escaped from the arms of Jesus to put herself at his feet. Jesus wanted that in her state she would hold on, remaining in his arms, telling her, If you are able to hold on in this state, Remaining in my arms without wavering, this cross shall be your sanctification. Otherwise, you shall always stay at the same point. On seeing this, I said, Jesus, what do these people want from me? It seems to me that they want to take holy freedom away from me and enter into the secrets that exist between me and you. And Jesus, My daughter, if I allowed them to hear something of what you say to me, it was because of their great faith. And if I did not do it, I would feel as if I were defrauding them. But let others try and you shall see that I would not even let you utter a sound. And I, I fear, O oh Jesus, that even at this moment we are not alone. And if you allow things to get out, where shall my hiddenness in you be any more? Listen, O oh Jesus, I'm telling you this, Nice and clear. I don't want my nonsense to get out. You alone must know it, because you alone know me, how mad and bad I am. 
for I even reach the point of doing impertinences with you, and of becoming fussy, as if I were a little girl. Who would ever reach this point? No one. Only my madness, my pride, my great wickedness. And since I see that you love me more, in order to have more love from you, I continue with my nonsense, caring about nothing but to be your amusement. What do others know about this, oh dear Jesus? My daughter, do not worry. I told you that I don't want this habitually, at most once in a hundred times. And almost to distract me, he added, Tell me, what do you want to say to those who are in heaven? And I, by myself, I can say nothing to no one. Only to you can I say everything. Through you, you shall tell them that I regard and greet everyone. The sweet mamma, the saints and the angels, my brothers, and the virgins, my sisters. And you shall tell them to remember the poor exiled one. February 2nd, 1912, How the Victim Soul Must Be This morning, as I offered a soul as victim to Jesus, Jesus accepted the offer and told me, My daughter, the first thing I want is union of wills. She must give herself prey to my will. She must be the amusement of my volition. I shall be very attentive on looking at whether everything she does is connected to my will, especially if it is voluntary. In fact, I shall not take into account things that are not voluntary, to the point that, when she tells me that she wants to be my victim, I shall consider it as not said. Second, to the union with my will, add victim of love. I shall be jealous of everything. True love is no longer master of itself, but of the beloved. Third, victim of immolation. She must do everything in the attitude of sacrificing herself for me, even the most indifferent things. To this shall add, being victim of reparation. She must feel sorrow for everything. Repair me for everything. Compassionate me in everything. And this will be the fourth thing. If she behaves faithfully in this, then shall I be able to accept her as victim of sacrifice, of suffering, of heroism, of consummation. Recommend that she be faithful. If she is faithful, everything is done. And I, yes, she shall be faithful. And he will see. February 3rd, 1912. If in the soul there is no purity, upright working, and love, she cannot be the mirror of Jesus. Continuing in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus came. And placing his holy hand under my chin, he told me, 
my daughter, you are the reflection of my glory. Then he added, In the world, I need mirrors to which to go and look at myself. Only then can a font serve as mirror in which people can reflect themselves when the font is pure. But it is of no use for the font to be pure if the waters are cloudy. It is useless for that font to boast about the preciousness of the stones on which it is founded if the waters are cloudy. Nor can the sun make its rays perpendicular so as to render those waters silvery and communicate to them the variety of colors. Nor can people reflect themselves in it. My daughter, virgin souls are the similes of the purity of the font. The crystal clear and pure waters are the upright working. The sun that makes its rays perpendicular is me. The variety of colors is love. Therefore, if I do not find purity, upright working, and love in a soul, she cannot be my mirror. These are my mirrors in which I make my glory be reflected. With all the others, even if they are virgins, not only can I not reflect myself, but if I wanted to do so, I would not recognize myself in them. And the sign of all this is peace. From this, you shall be able to know how very scarce are the mirrors I have in the world. In fact, very few are the peaceful souls. February 10th, 1912. The sign in order to know whether one has left everything for God and has reached the point of operating and of loving everything divinely. Continuing in my usual state, my always lovable Jesus made himself seen for just a little, and he told me, My daughter, when one leaves everything and operates for me, and loves everything divinely, all things are at his disposal. And the sign that one has left everything for me, and has reached the point of operating and of loving everything divinely, is that in operating, in speaking, in praying, in everything, he no longer finds hindrances, displeasures, contrasts, oppositions, because in the face of this power of operating, and of loving everything divinely, all lower their heads and dare not even breathe. In fact, I, benevolent Father, am always guarding the human heart, and in seeing it slip away from me, that is, operating and loving humanly, I put thorns, displeasures, bitternesses, that prick and embitter that human work and love, and the soul, on seeing herself pricked, realizes that that way of hers is not divine. So she enters into herself and acts differently. In fact, the pricks are the sentinels of the human heart, and they provide it with the eyes to be able to see who is the one who is moving her, whether God or the creature. On the other hand, when the soul leaves everything 
and operates and loves everything divinely. She enjoys my peace. And instead of having the sentinels and the eyes of the prickings, she has the sentinel of peace that moves anything that can disturb her peace away from her. And the eyes of love that put to flight and burn those who want to disturb her. Therefore they remain at peace with regard to that soul. They give her peace and they place themselves at her disposal. It seems that the soul can say, Nobody touch me, because I am divine, and I am fully of my sweet love, Jesus. Nobody dare to disturb my sweet rest with my highest good. And if you dare to, with the power of Jesus that is mine, I shall put you to flight. It seems I have said much nonsense, but Jesus shall certainly forgive me, because I have done it to obey. It seems as if he assigns to me a written essay, and I, a little ignorant one and a child, don't have the ability to develop it. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 10. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.